What's up, y'all? Back at it again. Another week here in Japan. Rainy day, but it's all good. Uh, today, uh, last week, I talked about depression, and thank you so much to everyone that reached out for me. Uh, for me, for real. Uh, thank you to everyone that reached out to me and uh, shared their personal stories with me. I know it's not easy to talk about, so uh, for real, thank you so much. And you guys kind of inspired me to make another video uh, this week about love. And love is something I think we can all kind of relate to, whether you love your family or your pet or your job or whatever it may be. But today I want to talk about love in the context of like intimate relationships, right? Like your spouse or yeah, your spouse basically. Um, so what does the Quran say about love? Let's get started. Okay, first of all, if you're wondering why I'm doing this video, um, I think that's a good question kind of I thought, of, I thought about. First of all, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, used to say, convey for me even one verse, right? And I think the Quran and the verses in the Quran can really help a lot of people understand a lot of things that go on in life. So that's why I'm doing this. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing about love is that the one thing, if you're gonna take one thing from this video, is that you cannot control love. This is very clearly mentioned in the Quran. Allah says in chapter 30, verse 21, uh, here, here, just listen to it actually. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Yes, as you can see, it says Allah and He has placed between you love and affection, right? He has placed between you, not you yourself. And some of you guys, I mean, I personally can understand this because I feel like love definitely cannot be controlled. Like sometimes you find someone uh, that's a good person and stuff and you have the most intense love for them, right? In intense love for them. And then sometimes you find someone who's maybe on paper Right? Maybe they're better, maybe they have a better job or they make more money or they're more attractive or, or this and that. But in your heart, there's absolutely like nothing there for them. Nothing there. And that's something that you can't control. Um, and speaking of this, actually, you know, some people are like, well, you know, I fall for everyone or, you know, I've seen this myself where, you know, people like every other week, maybe someone's with a new person and they claim that they really love the person. And I think that it's very important to distinguish between love and lust. Because I was there at one point in my life where I couldn't really differentiate between the two. But love is basically something that is irrelevant of looks. It's irrelevant of circumstances, right? It's, it's almost unconditional. I, I would say almost because there's always conditions to things. But almost unconditional. Um, and then there's lust, which is literally like, you know what lust is. I'm not going to go there. But if you're wondering whether you love a person or whether you lust over them, like think about it like this. Like if the person, let's say, Allah forbid, right? If the person tomorrow got in a car accident and they were paralyzed or um, they wore like let's say they wore a patch for the rest of their life or something I don't know something that detracts from their physical beauty or, or what makes them what makes you attractive to them would you still love that person would you still be with that person that's the question you have to ask and then that's how you can determine I think whether it's love or lust so the first message is yeah love is something you can't control love is something that is there from God and Allah puts it in the hearts right that's that's the Islamic perspective and number two interestingly in this verse also what's mentioned is that Allah doesn't just say he puts love between the hearts he says he puts love and affection right love and affection uh, Rahma in Arabic right Rahma this is very interesting to me because I think it's almost saying that love is never enough love is never enough so and I think we all a lot of us can relate to this um, but basically to make a successful relationship you need two things right you need love and affection because i think many of us can relate to the fact that you know when you first start seeing someone like you're you're so crazy about them right that infatuation phase am i getting my english wrong <laughs> anyways you know what i mean uh that phase right that super you know romantic lovely phase eventually i think dies out right the love doesn't die out but that phase dies out right and then you just kind of get used to each other um i think that's inevitable almost but the one thing that keeps you going beyond love is affection. Because I think you can love someone and still treat them horribly, honestly. Um, and that's what kind of like abusive relationships are like. 
But Allah is saying in the Quran, love and affection. Because during those hard times, you're going to need affection. Right? You, you, you need to generally care about the person to keep things good, to keep things going. Um, now, this brings me to the next point. If you're going to take anything away, take, so first take the fact that you can't control love. That no, number one. Number two, this. Fighting and stuff and arguments are normal, I think. They're normal. And they're actually mentioned in the Quran, indirectly. Um, so I'd like to share something in related to that. Um, okay, number one. Yes, your spouses are a huge blessing, right? Your spouses are a huge blessing. Your children are a huge blessing. Your wealth is a huge blessing. But all these things are tests. Because the Islamic perspective is that this whole life, right? From the moment we're born until when we die, it's all a test. So these things are part of the test. And the test is, will they make you forget God, right? Will they make you forget Allah, dhikrullah? That's what we call it in Arabic. Um, or will you use them to your advantage to get you to the hereafter in a way? So by basically by doing good to your wife or by using your wealth to, for example, to feed the poor or um, things like that. So what Allah has given you, if you use it in a good way, you can actually maximize it to your benefit. But if you just kind of let it distract you, then you're kind of hindering the benefit in a way. So yes, so they're a good thing definitely, but there's, all, there's also a test in your spouse. And number two, about arguments and stuff like that. Um, I should note that in Islam, divorce is actually allowed, um, unlike some other religions. But in terms of fighting and stuff like that, there's a verse Allah says in chapter Surah Al-Baqarah, which is chapter 2, verse 216. Allah says, perhaps you dislike a thing which is good for you, and perhaps you like a thing which is bad for you. So we may see arguments as, man, I don't want to argue with you, like I really don't want to hear it. But perhaps it's a good thing, right? Maybe it's... I mean, I don't, I don't know the reason, but people say, you know, relationships where people fight, there's like spark there, there's love there. People, when people don't fight, there's no love there. I don't know if I agree with that, but from an Islamic perspective, you don't always know what's good for you. And sometimes what you think is good for you is actually really bad for you. So that's something to keep in mind. The third thing, one of the most romantic verses I've ever come across in my life was in the Quran, actually, <laughs> not from watching the notebook. Um, it's also in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2. Where Allah says that your wives are like a cover for you and you are a cover for them. So it's like you're almost made for each other. And that's what the verse that, that I was previously mentioned, the one that you just heard says. Like it's almost like you're made for each other. So in Islam there is such thing as soulmates, right? Um, and yeah, so that's what the Quran says about love. So number one, you can't control it. It's Allah who puts love between you and, and whoever's heart it may be. And number two, fighting and stuff. Uh, you, you, like your spouse, your life, your wealth, anything, there's good and there's bad to it. There's good and there's bad to it. And it's all a test. So, um, and yeah, things that you think are good for you may not be good for you. Things that are bad for you, things that you think are bad for you may actually be good for you. So, that's what the Quran says about love, peace, blessings, love, and peace. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.